So yesterday we got the death of Alton Sterling. It was a, another black man getting murdered by the police. Go figure, you know. You know, ever since Obama's been in office, we've been getting stories like this. And it's not necessarily a white versus black. It's a, a cop versus black, but it's all about, you know, the black rights and whatnot. It keeps people arguing. It gets people mad. And you know, when you watch these videos... I'm not going to play any clips because I know what happens when, when you do. If you play the clip, I'll get a copyright claim. Whatever. I won't be able to make videos and whatnot. But, uh, been there, done that. But if you actually really watch the video and analyze it, the things just don't make sense. How come every single time a shooting or something like this happens, it's always the worst video ever, you know, the worst camera of all time. And even like this one, it was pretty good, but then right when all the action happens, the camera just goes to the right. You know what I mean? If you're going to stand there and videotape it, why don't you videotape the whole thing? And I mean, that angle goes to the right, and supposedly the first video was a somebody in a car videotaping it, but there's not even a car over to the right. You know what I mean? It was almost like they did it in two different takes. Maybe somehow that car was way farther back, but it just doesn't seem like that's possible. Especially with the quality of the video, you know, if they would have had to zoom in a whole lot, it would have made it a whole lot worse. So, you know, whatever. I'll give it the very, very slight benefit of the doubt that it was real. I doubt it. <laughs> I really, really don't think it's real at all. If it really happened, then it definitely happened by the numbers and by the... The little code that they love to do, the storylines, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This other one, though, no way that one was real. That girl didn't even care that her boyfriend was dying or shot or anything. She, you know, she's like, oh, they, the cop killed him, and then she said he shot his arm off. I mean, the little kid in the back's not even crying. No way. A four-year-old sees somebody get shot and there's blood everywhere. They're going to be going hysterical. And that kid was just like, you know, you never hear it on the video. I guess you don't actually see the kid on the video. But every kid that I know would be in the background screaming like, Mommy, Mommy, you know, and like everything else. Wouldn't just be sitting there. Just doesn't make that much sense. This lady even starts going hysterical after, you know, the camera goes off of her. Just like how the camera pans away on this one, too, you know. And then she gets back in and asks for a ride home. Doesn't even care about going to the hospital to make sure her boyfriend is alive, you know. And maybe that's just out of, you know, fear or whatever. But no way that one was real. I mean, just go watch it for yourself. Absolutely unbelievable. I guess it's believable to many people, though. And that's why they fall for this crap, you know? Anyway, the reason this one stuck out so much to me was the location that it happened at. It happened in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Just so happens to be a place that I have been mentioning a whole lot in the past month or so. Baton Rouge, Louisiana even equals 219 in Gematria. I made a whole bunch of videos and posts on this. I'll just leave a little note or somewhere on this video re-explaining some of the interesting things about 219. But between this blog and my videos, a lot of what I've talked about with Baton Rouge is that after Obama's State of the Union address this year, his final one on January 12th, he went to two places after he was done. He went to Omaha, Nebraska on January 13th, and then he went to Baton Rouge, Louisiana on January 14th. And I'll leave a link, like I said, I'll leave a link to a whole bunch of other videos so you can go back and watch them. There's a lot of information, but I did talk about this place multiple times, even in regards to Lil Wayne emergency landing in Omaha. I even talked about it in the College World Series, how Coastal Carolina made it to Omaha after winning in Baton Rouge. Coastal Carolina and Arizona's first game of the season was even on February 19th. A ton of other stuff, but check this out. So Obama goes to Baton Rouge for the first time ever since he's been president on January 14th. Now, today we've got all these stories about Black Lives Matter and whatnot in Baton Rouge, a city that's been simmering for years. Black Lives Matter in Gematria equals 173. 
Obama just so happens to go to Baton Rouge 173 days before this guy gets murdered by the police. You know, the two states that it happened in, Louisiana and Minnesota, I've talked about all of this coding to both of them places. Louisiana equals 38, Minnesota equals 38, Prince equals 38, Omaha 38, Elkhorn 38, Lil Wayne 38, Death also equals 38. If you write out just Louisiana, Minnesota, it just so happens to equal 76, right? The two states involved in these shootings, they both happened or were, were reported on 7-6. The date, 7-6, can also be written as 6-7. That's how they do it in other parts of the world. 6-7, Philando Castile equals 67. Alton Sterling equals 67 in Gematria. So go figure, you know? So anyway, when Obama went to Baton Rouge, like I showed you in Omaha, when he went to Omaha, he went to Baxter Arena, that equals 109. If you write out Omaha, Nebraska, it equals 109. They made sure to let you know that he came in on Air Force One, that equals 109. Tons of other 109. That same day, somebody won the Powerball in Chino Hills, California. Chino Hills equals 109. Winning Powerball ticket equals 109 in Gematria. Ton of other stuff with that, but just wanted to point it out. So, the next day Obama goes to Baton Rouge and he gives a speech at McKinley High School. McKinley? I mean, it's seriously, when you think of McKinley, McKinley was the third president to be assassinated. I just made posts about him. He died in Buffalo, which connects to the Native American theme. It was at the World Fair that was held in Buffalo. Which is interesting in regards to this guy's name being Alton Sterling. It reminds me a lot of the Los Angeles Clippers who were originally the Buffalo Braves. Then they moved to San Diego. Then they moved to Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, now they're the Clippers. But they were the Buffalo Braves. And a big piece of a lot of this race stuff that's been going on was in regards to the Clippers' former owner, Donald Sterling. You know, most likely why... He supposedly got shot by a silver car. Sterling silver, you get the joke? I mean, they even mentioned that it is silver. I'm not just making that up. If you read some of the CNN articles, they talk about a silver car. Also, you know, the Clippers are named after a, a boat or a, a ship that is fast. Some of them were even used in, during the slave trading. And at the time of Donald Sterling doing all this, David Stern, the commissioner of the NBA, he retires, and then we get Adam Silver. You know, David Stern, the back of the boat, Adam Silver, Donald Sterling, Sterling Silver. It's a huge joke. And there's a ton more to it. I have a video on it somewhere. V. Stiviano even equals 59 in Gematria, a number that's been negatively stamped on black people throughout history. That's even why Black History Month ends on the 59th day of the year normally. Actually, in the leap year, it ends on the word on the 60th day. You know, the super N word in Gematria even equals 60. The small way, it equals 42. The 42nd day, even in February. Tons of other stuff with it. You know, blues, 59. Negro, 59. Slave, 59. Anyway, in regards to the Native American stuff that I've been mentioning as well, I talked about this, I believe, in a video, but maybe not. But Baton Rouge has actually got its name from the Red Stick. It was the boundary between the hunting grounds of the Huma and the Bayou Gula, however you say that. So basically, Baton Rouge means the Red Stick. So Baton Rouge named after... The Native Americans. And you know, there's a lot of red that's involved in both of these shootings. I'll talk about that. So like, you know, here's the silver car. He's wearing the red shirt when he gets shot. Then they show the family, of course, this guy wearing the Trayvon Martin shirt. With the, you know, the bright red Trayvon Martin shirt. They even show a kid, or a guy in the background... When the sun supposedly crying and whatnot, they show the Miami Heat. This was also the same day that Dwayne Wade left the Miami Heat to sign with the Chicago Bulls. 
But they also show him in this shirt, in the one of the original CNN videos, they show him in this shirt. Then they obviously have a ton of red. But in the, the next shooting, we got, of course, the guy in the background in the red shirt. And then we got the turquoise shirt, the turquoise hoodie. Then this guy wearing the Day of Dignity Islamic Relief or whatever. He's wearing the turquoise Bringing it back to all the race stuff again, you know, Malcolm X and the death of Muhammad Ali. Interesting though, this guy, he, he asked like at odd times too, he kept saying, no one checked his pulse, no one checked his pulse. Just interesting in Gematria, no one checked his pulse equals 211. A number that we've seen a whole lot, even if you write out Louisiana and Minnesota, it equals 211. But also as a date, it's the 42nd day of the year, right? I mean, it's just so ridiculous, like I'm saying. It's the whole point of all of it. You know, and they absolutely love it. You know, that's why Black History Month in February. February. 42. Word Freemason. Freemason also equals 42. George Washington even died on 2-11, the 42nd day. Huge Freemason, you know, Freemasons created the nation that we live in. They based it on the Bible. Anyway, I also remember seeing this color on a story just a while back where I was talking about New Orleans passing the Blue Lives Matter and whatnot. I made a video about this as well. This story had blue all over it, you know. They had the blue in the back, the blue light or something, the blue door. The girls wore blue dresses. You know, this guy, whatever, somebody called the cops on him for having the 12 girls in there. And then he was even the father of some of them with an underage girl and whatnot. But just interesting, it's the same color. And I mentioned it in regards to Louisiana and the Blue Lives Matter. I even talked about how I read, and I wasn't quite for sure if it was legit, but it talked about a blue door in some Native American tribes represents... It keeps away negative energy or negative spirits or something. You know, who knows? But I also found another website because I was just trying to look up like turquoise and I found all kinds of stuff on it. Like I said, I don't know how legit this website is, but basically it said the same thing. You know, it said that turquoise was used by the, the holy men of the tribe and whatnot of the Anasazi. Mostly, it's mostly found in like south, west, uh, the United States and whatnot. But you know, just wanted to point that out. Don't know how significant it is. Um, I read some other stuff that said that all this is just some new age lie and whatnot. So, just pointing that out at least. So you know, I don't know. Not sure what the blue and the red completely represent, but the red definitely has to represent the red stick that Baton Rouge is named after. And then this turquoise color, like I said, I'm not for sure. And maybe there's something to do with the combination. You know, I really don't know, but there's something going on with them two colors in these two stories. Also, in regards to Native Americans, you know, you just always think of animals, right? I don't know, you know, you think of doing peyote and turning into a certain animal and whatnot. That's maybe just the stereotype, but, you know, that's just what you think of, at least for me. But the second shooting happened in Fal Falcon Heights, Minnesota. It actually happened right here on Larpenter and Fry Street. But some of these other streets and stuff around here are just super interesting. Like, I'm, I've been talking about how it seems like it's you know, they're telling me something, and they're showing me some stuff that is involved in my life. So, Fry Street and Larpenter, there's Underwood Street right here. I just talked about my brother equaling 68. Dunlap, the town I live in, equals 68. They killed Yellow Smoke, the last keeper of the Sacred Pole, in 1868. Underwood, Iowa is where my, my brother married his wife, was from or whatever. They live really close to there. I live in Dunlap, Iowa. And there's even a North Dunlap Street over here. I grew up on Iowa Avenue. 
like two blocks away from where I live, but just just some interesting street names, I guess. Even Crawford Avenue. I talked about, you know, the death of the Iowa football player in Vail. And I talked about Vail, Iowa, but also Crawford County is where Yellow Smoke Park is. That's where Brandon Scherf uh, is from, from, from Denison, Iowa. And now he plays for the Washington Redskins. You know, just see the previous parts of this. I'm, I'm putting this in a playlist, but I talked about a lot of this previously. You know, and who knows? Maybe it, maybe it means nothing, but I find it pretty interesting. I don't see Dunlap very often, and then I see it pretty close to where this happens. I also see Iowa Avenue where I grow up and Crawford Avenue. Just all stuff that I've been talking about, you know? So anyway, I looked up Fal Falcon Heights, Minnesota because I didn't know anything about it. Just so happens to be when Vice President Teddy Roosevelt first used the African proverb, speak softly and carry a big stick. And he used it in a speech at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds, which is pretty interesting. So Falcon Heights, Minnesota is still where the Minnesota State Fair is takes place or whatever. But I just talked about how William McKinley is connected to all of it. Obama went to Baton Rouge and gave a speech at McKinley High School. William McKinley got shot at the World Fair in Buffalo, New York. And Teddy Roosevelt just so happened to be his vice president. So when he was shot and died, Teddy Roosevelt becomes the next president. And then Roosevelt gives this speech four days before McKinley is shot. And he talks about speak softly and carry a big stick and it even built the phrase into his concept of big stick diplomacy right and then baton rouge is named after the red stick and then now i mean come on how ridiculous is that you know this other shooting involves teddy roosevelt and the big stick and then the one in baton rouge involves the red stick and mckinley who was the president when Teddy Roosevelt was vice president. What are the odds of that? I mean, I'm telling you, they're building it up for some type of political assassination, whether it's Obama or what. It sure seems like it. They showed us a lot of, you know, connections to Abraham Lincoln by, you know, Obama opening up Ford's Theater right when he first became president. We got all the theater shootings, like the Batman shooting. Last year we had the theater shootings, at the train wreck shooting. Obama and Abe Lincoln, the only presidents politically out of Illinois. I've even shown a lot of stuff in regards to the death of James Garfield, you know, the orange cat, all kinds of 91 around him. He died on September 19th, that equals 91. He was born on November 19th, that equals 91. You know, he dies 79 days after getting shot at a train station. There's all kinds of, you know, Amtrak derailments. They're all coded into tons of stuff. Even the store that Elton Sterling supposedly got shot by, the triple S, right, SSS, reminds me of the sound that a snake makes. Just who knows if that has anything to do with it, but just makes me think of the Native American theme. Also, SSS and Gematria, 19 plus 19 plus 19 equals 57. He got shot on 5-7. That's how they would write it in other countries, 7-5 or 5-7. Baton Rouge, even located on 91 degrees west. They report these shootings on 7-6, which is 76 days before 9-19. Tons of other stuff. You know, McKinley dies in 1901. Harrison dies in 1901. They were the presidents in between and after Grover Cleveland's non-consecutive terms. Talked about, you know, the Republican National Convention being in Cleveland, the Democratic one in Philadelphia. There's been tons and tons and tons of foreshadowing to Philadelphia. So who knows, you know? 919 also, a day that YouTube has been showing me for, you know, since 2014. They've been showing me this day by giving my videos copyright strikes and people trolling my comments and leaving just strange comments. 
that always lead me back to this 919 date. Even the death of Nancy Reagan was involved in 919. A whole bunch of other stuff, you know. I'm going to post some videos in the links and whatnot, or at least a playlist of some stuff to watch. But, I mean, I've been talking about a lot of this for a while. It all just keeps coming back. You know, I mentioned Baton Rouge a while ago in regards to Obama going there right after his State of the Union in Omaha. And, I mean, you obviously see what I'm talking about, why they chose these two places in regards to the stick and also, you know, foreshadowing of some type of political assassination, which seems to be Obama still, you know. But who knows, you know, he's almost done being the president. Maybe it's something different. Maybe it's the Pope. I don't know, but it seems like they're definitely foreshadowing some type of race war that's, you know, it, all, it makes a lot more sense if it would be Obama to be assassinated. And it would cause a huge problem if Obama was assassinated. I mean, these articles get people mad enough. I can't even imagine what it would be like if the first black president was assassinated, you know? But whatever, you know, just going to keep following the story, you know, see where all the coding leads me to again. And, uh, you know, just quit believing these stories, though. I mean, I totally agree that, you know, the police, police are dicks. I don't even like the police in the small town that I live in. You know, we have... Three cops for no reason whatsoever, you know? It's not like we have, like, super gang fights and everything else, but we still have three cops in the town that I live in. For what purpose, you know? I mean, I could list a billion personal stories about how cops are dicks in my own personal life. And I'm a white guy. I totally understand that black people are definitely more targeted by police and whatnot. But the whole point is, all of this is just to get you more angry, it's not real, and that's the whole point of it, you know? It just adds fuel to the fire, and it makes people even more angry than they, they should be, you know? All these stories are doing is keeping the division and creating more division that we don't need in this country or in this world. It's propaganda like this that actually causes you know, real events to happen that don't get reported on in the media, you know? So moral of the story, you know, like I said, just quit believing this. All of this stuff is absolutely coded. Anything in the mainstream media is a lie. Always has been. If it is true, it's only half truth. You know, it's all there for a reason. Just, I mean, just think about the news. Why is it so hard to believe? Why, why do they waste, like, a month reporting about a, Natalie Holloway missing, yet there's missing children all over the world. Why in the world was she more special than other people, you know? Why are any of these stories more special than the other stories that happen every single day? It's because these stories are used for an agenda, and they code them with these storylines, and they also code them with Gematria. So, whatever, I'm going to leave it at that. Have a good night.